Welcome, Ben Runner. Now I've covered a lot of different unreleased consoles on my channel over the years, ranging from lesser known oddities such as the Namco Super System and SNK Neo Star to big name misses like the Atari Jaguar 2 and Sega Neptune. But one thing all of these systems had in common was that they came from well known, highly established manufacturers. But for this video, I really do delve into the darkest corners of the archives to dust off an amazingly obscure entry in the form of the UltraVision video arcade system. Now what is perhaps most interesting about this is that a surprising amount of people have actually requested that I cover this on my channel. For something I'd barely heard of myself before I started researching it, it seems rather unusual that people would be so eager to know more about it, but here it is for you. This story starts back in 1982, in a world that Atari had taken by storm with its 2600 video computer system. The huge success of the VCS saw a multitude of companies springing up from nowhere to try and grab a slice of the pie. It's widely agreed that the sheer amount of new software houses, along with the generally poor quality of their games, was the leading cause of the infamous North American video game crash. But I don't want to get into a whole discussion about that disastrous event, because we could be here all day, and I just want to focus on one company in particular. That company, of course, is Ultravision, who first came to people's attention in the latter part of that year with the release of two new games in Condor Attack and Karate. The first of these was nothing more than a blatant rip-off of the popular Century arcade game Phoenix. They had actually been officially ported to the 2600 by Atari themselves already. The second game, Karate, was actually a lot more innovative, being the very first one-on-one -on -one fighter released for the VCS. However, the horrendous visuals and broken unresponsive controls totally ruined any kind of enjoyment you might have got from it. The most interesting thing about these games, however, is the advertising particularly the bottom right hand corner that featured a simple drawing of what looked like an all in one system with the words UltraVision Video Arcade System coming soon around it. Now there's no doubt that anyone who saw this would have been very intrigued indeed because although we had already seen an all in one arcade system in the form of the MB Vectrex that had a specialised vector display rather than a regular CRT TV screen so the potential of having a console with its own built-in colour TV would be simply mesmerising for a young mind. Ultravision certainly weren't the only ones who thought this either, as something pretty similar arrived on the market the following year in the form of the Philips Video Pack G7200. The console would officially be announced by Ultravision at the 1983 CES show, where they handed out brochures promoting their new system, but didn't actually have one there for people to see which certainly left both consumers and the press very sceptical of his existence. Details of the hardware on offer were also very sketchy indeed, despite some basic capabilities being detailed by the company. So let's look at what they did tell us then, starting with those images of the prototype. As well as boasting a built-in 10-inch colour TV with its own tuner, there were also two Atari D-plug type joysticks, two headphone sockets, a standard RF socket to connect other devices to the TV, and the ability to either power the console from a mains power supply or a car battery for portability. Ultravision promised that their console would be able to play ColecoVision and Atari 2600 games with an additional converter, as well as its own specific titles. It would feature 64K of RAM, a state-of-the-art microprocessor, and could be converted into a full-blown computer with the addition of an optional keyboard accessory. They also boasted about their own line of super advanced coin up quality game cartridges with dynamic visual effects that would include three dimensional graphics and zooming. Now it was rumoured that the Ultravision was in fact based on the MSX standard which had been developed over in Japan by Spectra Video, Microsoft and the ASCII Corporation as a standard computer format long before the IBM PC took over that mantle. What adds fuel to this fire is that the ColecoVision was based on an early version of what became the MSX hardware. Remember, it was promised that the Ultravision VAS could play ColecoVision games and in its most standardised form, the MSX computer came with 64K of RAM and a fast Z80 processor. While this theory certainly sounds more than plausible, later advertising by Ultravision muddies the water somewhat. You will see here that the company were also promising compatibility with Apple II and IBM PC software and peripherals too. We can only assume that this hardware would have been included within the promised keyboard attachment because neither of these machines were set up for arcade quality gaming and were prohibitively expensive when compared to home consoles. 
This later advertising also promises a much larger lineup of games to join the originally announced titles. So joining Karate, Condor Attack, Spider Kong and Quest for the Idol are 12 more titles, several of which appear to be sequels to the ones in that initial lineup. I'll go into the games in a bit more detail momentarily, because these present an interesting story too, but first I need to show you a very different angle to the Ultravision VAS. Whilst the console was announced in November 1982 in the US, it seems there were plans to take the console over to Europe very early on too. Leading German video game magazine Telematch presented a preview of a new system they called the Funvision F311 in its December issue that would have hit shelves that very same month. Now take a look at that photo for a moment and see how similar it looks to the Ultravision VAS. Could it be that the two companies were partnering on this venture? The magazine makes no mention of Ultravision or their system, but did actually do a separate feature on the VAS just a couple of months later, again, with no connection being made between the two. Funvision, along with a glut of other electronics manufacturers across the world, had previously released various Pong clones that, as well as their own version of the Interton VC4000, a very early console from 1978 that was mostly available in Western Europe, so they did already have form for such a venture. Aside from this one article, no mention was ever made of the Funvision again in the German press that we know of, so this part of the story very much remains a mystery. As we entered the second quarter of 1983, all word on the Ultravision console went quiet, but adverts for their Atari 2600 games did still appear for a short time, omitting the previous preview in the bottom right hand corner. Supposedly the company couldn't gain enough investment to bring the console to life, and once the crash kicked in all hope was lost to keep the business alive, and Ultravision quietly folded. So let's go back to those games as promised. Whilst Condor Attack and Karate did see a release of the Atari 2600, although the latter was only distributed in small numbers, the two other announced games, Spider Kong and Quest for the Idol, never quite made it out the door. Well, not with any Ultravision branding anyway. You see, Spider Kong was released by other companies, albeit mostly Asian bootleggers, under a variety of names including Pac Kong, Spider Monster, Tonky Kong, and the original title. Some of these were hacked to change the sprites. Notice somebody familiar there? while some were left with the original copyright messages, including the Funvision name on several European releases, once again reinforcing the idea of a relationship between the German company and Ultravision. And if you thought Karate was bad, Spider Kong is possibly worse, with its non-stop flicker and broken jumping mechanics. The fate of Quest of the Idol is not so clear but it's fairly likely that it became Panda Quest, a rubbish clone of Atari's own E.T. that was released by many of the same bootleggers as Spider Kong. It's unknown how many of Ultravision's games found it into the hands of these companies. They could have possibly been sold on by Ultravision after bankruptcy, or indeed by the original programmers. On the same note, the awful karate was later re-released by American company Froggo in the late 80s. Froggo were actually one of the few officially licensed producers of third-party Atari 7800 games, but it's unknown how they acquired the rights to it, if at all. Perhaps the two companies were even connected given their shared geography. And that concludes the story of the unreleased Ultravision Video Arcade System. I hope you enjoyed this fascinating look back at one of video game history's most obscure and virtually untold stories. If you enjoyed this video then please make sure you check out the Story of Playlist on my channel for more short documentaries about unreleased consoles and much more. But I would love to know what you think about the Ultravision. Was this console a good idea? And is it something you'd like to have in your collection? Please let me know in the comments and join in the discussion. Before I go though, I must thank all of my little patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, James Taylor, Neptune, Chaotic, Seth Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamer Man, and my new high level patron, Electron Star Collapse. New rewards have gone out this week to all of you. If you also want to help support my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now, where you can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.